Okay, so this section is titled Random Sampling and Population Inferences. This is on student handout two. Random sampling is everyone in the population must have an equal chance of being selected in order for a sample to be random. So basically everyone has to have a fair shot. I can't take a poll of this class and just ask the girls what they want for a snack or a prize or something. That wouldn't be fair to not ask the boys opinion as well. So everybody in the population must be asked. So a survey is taken of favorite sport in seventh grade, but only girls were surveyed. So since only girls were surveyed, this is not a random sampling. If they picked people out random in the seventh grade, that could be a random sampling. So a fair chance. Alright, so this says the senior class president would like to hold, host an after graduation lock-in. There will be games, gifts, and food. In order to decide if people would be willing to buy tickets and attend, she has decided to, to conduct a survey. She will select 25 students to meet and give input on the prizes, food, and ticket price. There are 500 members of the senior class. Number one says she selects every 10th student as they get off the bus one morning. So we have to decide if this is a random sampling or not a random sampling. So people getting off the bus, would that be fair to ask every 10th person getting off the bus? It would be not random sampling because not everybody is riding the bus to school. You excluded those that are car riders or drive themselves or walk to school. So that is not random sampling. Number two says, she asked her choir director to allow her to survey the, squ uh, the choir. Would that be a random sampling or not a random sampling? It would be not random sampling because not everybody takes choir. So not random sample. Okay, number three. She meets with the counselor who selects every 20th student on the school roster. Okay, random sampling or not random sampling? That is random sampling because she's using the whole roster and picking every 20th kid. That's different than this one because this was just bus riders. This includes everybody. Then picking the random 20, every 20th kid. Number four, she assigns each senior a number and randomly selects 25 numbers. Could that be an example of random sampling or not random sampling? That would be an example of random sample because it's at random. Everybody had a fair chance. Number five, she makes an announcement that people interested should meet in the library after school. That be random sampling or not random sampling? That would be not random sampling because some people might have something else after school to do and they couldn't be able to attend, like a sport or something. So not everybody was able to attend, so that's not a random sample. Six. A roster of the senior class is printed and each student's name is put into a hat. The principal selects 25 names. Is that a random sample 
or is that not a random sample? That is a random sample. Everybody had a fair chance to win. Okay, so that random sampling is pretty easy as long as everybody's getting a fair chance. Now to the back, population inferences. Once a sample has col been collected from a population, an inference about the entire population can be made by setting up a proportion. An inference is just kind of getting an idea. If I asked the class, raise your hand if how many people like pizza. I can get an idea of how many seventh grade kids like pizza by just asking this one class. That's an inference, getting a good idea. These inferences can also be used to compare different populations and make predictions. Another word for inferences is predictions. You're kind of predicting. All right, so here it says Eastside Middle School conducted a survey of random selected sixth graders to determine which elective they were most likely to participate in. The results are shown in the table. Okay, so Spanish, theater, and art was what they polled. A says how many students were surveyed. Well, I would do 14 plus 20 plus 6, and I find that 40 students were surveyed. Just added them up. B says, what percentage of students surveyed selected Spanish as their elective of choice? Okay, well, I'm going to add a little section here so I can see my total students is 40. How many selected theater? Well, I see, oh, I'm sorry, Spanish. How many selected Spanish? 14 of the total 40 students selected Spanish, and I have to know what percent that is. And you may remember a few units back, there's a poster on my wall that we talked about how to find percent, and we did percent over 100, and we set it equal to part over whole. Well, I see that 14 is the part, the whole group was 40. I need to find the percent. So that's what I'm looking for. And if you recall that we cross multiply, so I would multiply 14 times a hundred, then I would have to divide by this 40, and I find 35, so what percent of students surveyed select Spanish as their choice? That would be 35 percent, oops, selected Spanish. All right, C says, the school estimates that there are actually 350 students in sixth grade. Using this example about how many students can you be expected to sign up for art. Okay, well I see art, six students out of 40 signed up. And so I'm looking at art to total well, how many total kids are at in the sixth grade? They say 350. That's not how many are. We're trying to see how many are. 350 
would go here. I'm looking to see how many signed up for ARP. So here would be my proportion. And I could cross multiply. I could do 6 times 350 equals 2100 divided by 40. And I get x equals 52.5. So I'm going to reread the question. It says about how many students can be expected to sign up for art. Well, you can't have 0.5 of a student. So I would say about 53 students are going to sign up for art. All right, D says, the school estimates that there are 350 students in sixth grade. Using this sample, how many students can be expected to sign up for theater? Okay, I see theater, 20 out of the 40 students signed up for theater. So that's theater out of total kids. Well, how many total kids are in the sixth grade? 350, so that goes on the level of total. I need to see how many signed up for uh, theater. So again, I can cross multiply. 20 times 350 divided by 40, and I get x equals 175. Reread my question. How many students can be expected to sign up for theater? So, 175 students. All right, moving on. E says. The school decides to drop any elective in which less than 10% of the population has signed up for, has signed up for. Miguel says that since only six people signed up for art, it should be dropped. Explain why this is or is not correct. Well, yes, only six people signed up for art, but six out of 40 kids and I need to know what percent that is to find percent. I set it up like this. So when I cross multiply, 6 times 100 gives me 600 divided by 40. I find that that is 15%. So is art less than 10 percent of the population? No, it's 15 percent. So is Miguel right or incorrect? He is not correct because it gives you 15 percent of the population. All right. F, whoops, get this out the way. Mark each of the following as a true or false based on the data. It says over half of the students at East Side Middle School will select theater for the, their elective. Um, well, theater is 20 out of 40. And if I knew what percent that was, Cross multiply, 20 times 100, times 100, divided by 40, is exactly 50%. So is that over half? No, it's exactly. So that would be false. The next one says... Combined, the Spanish and art classes 
account for 50% of the elective results. Spanish and art. Well, I see Spanish is 14, art is 6, so if I add that together, I get 20 out of 40. Most of us already know that that is 50%. If I did not know it was 50%, I could do a proportion like this and solve. But it is 50%, so is that true or false? That is true. Now, the last one says, out of 350 students at Eastside Middle School, at least 120 will sign up for Spanish. Okay, Spanish is 14 out of 40 students, but if there is 350 total students, I need to know how many is actually signing up for Spanish. So I would use this proportion here. 14 times 350 divided by 40. That gives me x equals 122.5%. It says at least 120, well, or that's not percent, I'm sorry, that's students. Um, they say at least 120 will sign up for Spanish. So will at least 120 sign up for Spanish? Yeah, at least they will. So that is true. All right, so you have the rest of the class time to work on homework one, uh, two and the geometry packet one you may work on and you may finish in the test from Friday if you still have not finished that test.